The record reflects the presence of counsel for the parties. The defendant is present. The jury is present. And uh, <coughs> welcome back, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> you may approach the witness stand. Thank you. Be seated. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Earls is now returning to the witness stand. And uh, do you understand that you're still in jail? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, you may continue with your examination of this witness. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Earls. Good afternoon. I think what we left off at, I think we had just um, published before the jury two photographs of a gray uh, sweater hoodie that was um, that was recovered and you had, I guess, put it in a dry, a dry, a dryer cabinet and then later on um, you took that photograph. Do you recall that? Correct. Now, turning your attention to, and, and did you just get back on track here, uh, do you recall already testifying about a black skirt? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, in addition to the gray sweater and black skirt, what, if anything else, uh, did you receive from Officer Von Corsi? I, I guess it was the early morning hour until about Friday the uh, 14th. Yes, it was around 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, there was also a green blanket uh, and a blue uh, and white polka dotted top or tank top, uh, as well as two rolls of like masking tape. Um, and then there were two containers containing insect larvae or maggots um, from her as well. Okay, turning your attention to the uh, green blanket. Um, I think you testified earlier with respect to that. That was one of the items um, that you immediately put into a, the a dryer cabinet, is that correct? Yes, I did. And at that time, did you inspect it before you put it into the dryer cabinet? Yes, I did. Each item I did. As I was removing them from the refrigerator to place each item into its own drying cabinet, I then uh, inspected it for any kind of insect larvae and tried to remove as many as I could, place them into an individual container. Per and I'll label each one accordingly. Okay, so what you said? I'm actually going to object this to time whether we're still talking about the 14th or not. Yeah, why don't we just Thank get you. That clarified? I'll, I'll overrule the objection with the understanding that uh, that, that, that occurred. Sure. On which time period are you talking about that you took it out of the freezer and before putting it into the, uh, the drying cabinet? Okay, that started on the 15th, the afternoon of the 15th. So, um, and just, just to get Make it clear and get us back on track. When did you when did you receive the items from Officer Bonacorsi and place them into the freezer, the into, secure freezer? Into the refrigerator, the refrigerator on the fourteenth at around two in the morning. And then the next time you handled those items was on the fifteenth in the afternoon. And on the fifteenth, um, is that the Saturday? Yes. Okay. So on the fifteenth, now we're we're talking about the we're talking about the green blanket, correct? Correct. Okay. So what did you do on the fifteenth with respect to the green blanket? Okay. So the um, blanket well, again was in a separate container or a plastic bag uh, within the refrigerator. Took it out. Uh, then I started to remove any of the bug larvae maggots that I could uh, easily gather, and then I placed it into the forensic drying cabinet. You placed one into the forensic drying cabinet. Uh, I'm sorry, the black, the blanket. Okay. And what did you do with the maggots that you placed into the cylinder? Okay, those were placed into a specimen cup, uh, marked as to which item, the green blanket that I took them off of, and then a preservative was added to that, and then put back into the refrigerator. And um, and just just for just for the record, what preservative did you add to it? Uh, at that time, I used 10% formalin preservative. Um, and when you and you testified that prior to placing the green blanket into the drying cabinet, you did inspect it. Is that correct? Yes. Was the uh, green blanket was it still damp to the touch when when you placed it into the drying cabinet? It was very wet. Yes, dripping onto the paper which I had put onto the bottom of the drying cabinet. And. Um, What else did you recover from the uh, refrigerator with respect to the items from Officer Bonacarsi? 
okay? Uh, there was a, the pair of black jeans, uh, the polka dotted um, tank top, the black skirt, and then the rolls of, two rolls of uh, masking tape. Okay. With, with respect to the pair of black jeans, um, can you describe what you did with those? Okay, um, the same procedure. Uh, remove that individual bag from the refrigerator. Uh, Try to remove any uh, insect larvae off of that as well. Place that into its separately labeled container, and then place that into another drying cabinet. Um, now, a quick question with respect to the insect larvae or the maggots. When you first noticed them, I guess on Friday the 14th, I think you testified earlier that they were still alive and moving. Is that correct? At the crime scene, at I mean, at the scene at Noyula. At the scene, yes, on the 14th. Now, um, and when the, the maggots though that you recovered from the green blanket, and now you're seeing the the green sweater and the black jeans, were they were the maggots still alive and moving? Uh, they had been in the refrigerator for a, oh, a little over a day, so they were moving very, very slow, if any. So some were still moving? You used to notice some were still moving? Yes. Uh, did you recover any from the black jeans? Yes, I did. And uh, did you do the same thing with the maggots you recovered from the black jeans as you did with the uh, green black jeans? Yes, I did. And moving to, I'm not sure, did we discuss the black skirt already? Uh, not as far as the taking the maggots out for them. Okay, so can you tell us uh, what you did with respect to the black skirt um, after removing them from the refrigerator? Okay, the, I think this is on the 15th, is that right? On the afternoon of the 15th, yes. Okay. Uh, so again, just remove the item from the refrigerator, took it out of its packaging, uh, and then tried to remove as many of the maggots as possible and place them into an individually labeled container and then place that, uh, again, on some paper underneath it so to collect anything that falls off, put that into another forensic drawing cabinet. And with respect to the black skirt, was that still damp to the touch when you, I guess, removed it from the refrigerator on the 15th? Mm, yes, it was. And how about the uh, pair of blue jeans? Yes, they were wet as well. And the gray sweater? I'm sorry, did you say the blue jeans or I'm the sorry, black the jeans? Black jeans. The black jeans, I'm sorry. The black jeans were wet, yes. Thank you. And uh, with respect to the gray sweater as well? Uh, yes, it was wet. And I'm going to show you right now um, with respect to the oh, oh, okay. With respect to the rolls of tape, um, where, where did you place those when you received that from Officer Lana Carson in the early morning hours of the, I guess, the 15th? Uh, everything was put right into the refrigerator. So the, the, the rolls of tape as well? The wet rolls, yes. Okay. And what did you do with the, what if anything did you do with those wet rolls of tape? Which we're talking about two? Yes, there were two. And what did you do with those uh, when you recovered the other items from the refrigerator? Okay, so the two rolls of tape were also removed uh, from the refrigerator. Uh, they were placed into a drying area so that they would allow to air dry. And then once they were dried, uh, I actually uh, tested the outside of the roll to see if there were any fingerprints. I used black magnetic powder. Right. Can, can you describe how you tested the rolls of tape using that powder to detect, if you could, if there were any fingerprints? Okay. So um, the rolls of masking tape, it was a yellowish color masking tape, and they were kind of squashed, uh, so not perfectly round as you would find, buy them in the store, but kind of squashed. So I let them dry, and then once they were totally dry, I used black magnetic fingerprint powder uh, to check the outside of where any fingerprints may have been left. Uh, unfortunately, there were no uh, rich details observed on the outside. And with respect to the blue tank top of white polka dots? Yes, I do. Okay, and where did you recover that from? That was received from Officer Bonacorsi as well. Okay. And was that placed in the refrigerator like the other items you just described? Yes, it was. And turning your attention to the afternoon of the 15th, what, if anything, did you do with the uh, tank top? I removed that from the refrigerator from its, uh, within its package and then did the same. Um, that, I don't think, had uh, many, if any, um, 
maggots that were collected uh, from it as well. But then I did the same thing, placed it into the forensic drying cabinet with some paper underneath. Now, um, Mr. Earls, at some point, did you photograph any of these items that were brought to you by Officer Bonacorsi? Yes, I did. And did you photograph them before they went into the drying cabinet or after you retrieved them from the drying cabinet? After they were dry. Yeah, this time the state will be showing council what has been marked into marked for identification of states exhibits two fifty eight through two sixty eight through two fifty eight through two sixty eight through two fifty eight through two sixty eight through two sixty eight through two sixty eight through You may approach on uh, Ms. Rose with these exhibits. You may approach. Thank you. Um, Ms. Rose, I'm showing you what has been marked as takes exhibits 268 through 276 inclusive. And if you could um, go ahead and take a look at those, I'll have more questions when you're done. Two sixty eight. Um, I'm sorry, yes, two sixty eight through two seventy six. Yes, I do. And um, is the last exhibit there is exhibit two eighty marked for identification? Uh, no, this is actually two seven six. They depict the items uh, that we've been discussing that were removed from the refrigerator, placed into forensic drying cabinets, and then uh, photographed once they were removed. Okay, and um, just for the record, which items are these? Sure. Uh, 268 is a pair of black jeans, the front portion. 269 is the same pair of black jeans, uh, the rear of the jeans. 270 is the textured or corduroy side of uh, the green blanket. 271 is uh, a mid-range view of a linear hole in that blanket with a scale, a disposable scale. 
272 is a close-up of the linear hole on that corduroy side of the green blanket with a scale. 273 is the smooth side or the flip side of the green blanket uh, showing stains. 274 is a mid-range view of some of the stains on that green blanket. 275 is a close-up of the linear hole near the center of the green blanket but on the smooth side. And 276 is a close-up of some of uh, some other holes on the smooth side of the green blanket with a scale. And do each of those photographs accurately depict the items um, as you saw it back when you took these photographs? And were they taken? I started my uh, photographic <coughs> session of all of the evidence uh, after coming out of the drying around February 23. Okay, and where were they taken? Uh, in the evidence processing laboratory. Okay, and do they accurately depict the items as when you inspected them at that time? Yes, they do. Um, have these uh, pictures been altered or changed in any way? Uh, no, they have not. You are at this time the stable movement evidence space exhibits 268 through 276. And that sequence includes it. Mr. States exhibits 268 through 276 inclusive. So marked for identification purposes are received in evidence. And you have permission to publish those exhibits? Permission granted. And I'll be um, Mr. Stepan from the witness box to approach monitor. You may do so. There may have a question or two, Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, Mr. Earl, I'm going to show you what is in evidence as space exhibit. Let me begin with, with exhibit 268. Okay, can you tell us what are we viewing here? Okay, this is um, photograph 268 is a photograph of the uh, overview of the black jeans, Perrier's brand, showing the front with staining as well as a scale along the left side of the photograph. And again, you testified this, that the jeans have, had already been dried through the drying process? Correct. And showing you states exhibit 269. 269 is the same pair of Perialis jeans, except they're flipped over so you can see the rear portion as well as staining on the rear portion of the jeans. And then the scale along the left side. And showing you states exhibit 270. What are we looking at here? Uh, 270 is an overview of the uh, corduroy or the textured side of the green blanket um, along with a scale on the left side so you can get an idea of how large it is and then you can see in the, near the center uh, is a linear hole. And how, um, as far as the scale goes, can you tell us, is that in inches or centimeters? Yes, those are in inches. And what is the length of that scale? This one goes uh, 36 inches. So the width, right now you, you're just showing us the width of the blanket, is that correct? That scale? Well, just trying to give you an idea of how large it is as opposed to like a handker handkerchief size. So. And showing you space exhibit 271, what are you seeing here? 271 is uh, a photograph mid-range showing the um, linear hole in the center or uh, near center of the textured side of the green blanket with a small disposable scale placed next to it. Okay, and um, who placed that small disposable scale next to that linear hole? Uh, I did. And space exhibit 272. 272 is a close-up of that same linear hole on the textured, like the corduroy type 
um, side of the green blanket. And then you can see the linear hole there, and then there's a scale, which this scale is in centimeters. And when you're saying linear hole, uh, kid, what, what do you mean by that? Well, it's, uh, it's not like a, a round hole. It's more like a, a line. And um, the scale that we're seeing here, the, the small white scale next to the linear hole, um, when you said the centimeters, can, can you tell us the, the width or length of, of that scale? Uh, this one is, the gray area is, uh, the block area is approximately three uh, centimeters. And showing you space exhibit 273. So now I've uh, flipped over the blanket. This is an overview showing the staining areas on the, sl the smooth side of the blanket. And uh, you can see scale on the left side, again, just to give you a proportion uh, size. Now, with respect to the longer <coughs> side of the blanket, did, did you have a chance to um, determine how long the, the longer side of the blanket was? Uh, I did not in these photos, no. Showing you States Exhibit 274. So this is a mid-range view of an area on the blanket that is showing stains on that smooth size. Just a minute, I just want to see what it looks like. It's not the greatest on this one. It's a lot better on that one. He's showing you space exhibit. Two seventy five. Okay, two seventy five is a close up of that same linear hole near the center part of the blanket, but it's on the smooth side. And then you can see there's a paper uh, disposable scale here. Again, three centimeters is depicted in the, the gray area. And then there's the linear uh, cut or hole. And that's the space exhibit 276. So 276 is some, uh, some type of small holes here uh, that are depicted near a bunch of stained area near the edge of uh, the blanket. With scale. Now, without telling us the name or anything, did you conduct any presumptive testing on this blanket? Yes, I did. Mr. Rose, you also testified that you did place two rolls of masking tape into the drying cabinet. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, please have a seat. I'm going to bring that up to you. And you are showing counsel what has been marked and then it's page exhibits 239 and 240. May I approach you these exhibits, Your Honor? You may do so. Thank you. Mr. Earl, I'm showing you what has been marked for identification of states exhibits 239 and 240. Okay. And do you recognize those? Yes, I do. Um, what are they? These are photographs of the two rolls of masking tape uh, once they're dried. Now, I think you testified earlier that you um, did try to recover if, if there were any fingerprints on the masking tape. Is that correct? I did. Is that depicted in the photographs? The, the... No, this is before doing anything to the rolls other than letting them dry. Do those um, two photographs accurately depict the two rolls of tape 
that you reviewed when you removed them from the uh, drying cabinet. Yes, they do. You know, at this time, at this time the state will move into evidence states exhibits 239 and 240 mark for identification. Mr. Uncle. Brief audio, Yana. Proceed. Um, Mr. Earls, um, in terms of your description of those two rolls of tape um, and the contents on each of them, would you describe them as, um, and you can do so individually, um, I guess empty rolls or half full rolls? Like, can you give an estimate as to how many in each roll? Well, they're definitely used, uh, so very little remaining. Would that be on both of them? Yes. Do you know whether that was the condition of both rolls of tapes upon their discovery out in the Nubuai Lua Bay area? I do not know that. So are you aware of whether one of them had more tape than depicted in that picture? No, sir. Okay. I have no further questions, no objection to the admission of those exhibits. States exhibits uh, 239 and 240 marked for identification purposes are received in evidence. You may proceed. Thank you, Your um, Your at this time the state is going to request permission to, uh, I guess, retrieve from the evidence. States must be okay. uh, Permission, Your Honor. Um, here are the fiscal evidence, uh, which would consist of the black skirt, States Exhibit 291, and the rolls of tape, States Exhibit 290. I'm looking at these four. I think the 291 still be foundation. No, I, I think I gave the court the wrong numbers. I do need the fiscal exhibits, not the fiscal numbers. Okay. And I'm going to permission for uh, Mr. Rose to step down and have these two items published before the jury, 290 291. You, he may do so. already open so you don't need to use a pair of scissors. Can you remove the item or take a look at the item 
Um, this case exhibit 291, mark for identification, use in a pair of gloves, and do not show it to uh, the jury at this time, please. Okay. But not open. Um, but not lift up. Well, I'm going to ask you if you're to, if you're able to identify what's in State Exhibit 291 mark for identification. So if you need to open it up to identify it, then by all means, yes. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And uh, what is it uh, that you recognize about this? This is the black skirt that I had received uh, wet, and then I air dried it, and then photographed it, which we saw the photographs earlier. And how do you know that that's the same black skirt that you received from Officer Bonacarsi, and then placed it in the refrigerator, and then later on in the uh, drying cabinet? Uh, it was in this container, which has my writing on it, and originally, my seal with my initials and date. And um, in looking at that, or first of all, the, the black shirt, once you place it into the secure refrigerator, as you just said earlier, um, did anyone else have, did anyone else handle that uh, black skirt other than yourself? No, sir. And then when you place it into the drying cabinet during that time period, had anyone else handled that black skirt other than yourself? No, sir. Um, and uh, are you sure now that that's the same black skirt that you had removed from the uh, refrigerator after receiving it from Officer Von Carsey and then placed it into the drying cabinet and then photographed it? Yes, I am. Your Honor, at this time, the escape would move into this space exhibit 291, which has been marked for identification. Mr. Arnold. Is Brief Vaudry done? Proceed. Uh, Mr. Rosa, can, can you testify as to whether that skirt is in, in the same or substantially same condition as it was when it was found out in the Nuuailua Bay Area? I cannot. Okay, so you don't know whether that thing was tampered with before it got into police cu uh, custody, correct? I can only attest to when, from when I recovered it from Officer Bonacorsi. Okay, I have no further questions. I have uh, no objection to uh, admitting any evidence. States Exhibit uh, 291, so marked for identification purposes, is received in evidence. You, you may publish if you wish, and you may step down, uh, Mr. Rose, if you, you wish. Can, can we use the table for that? Yes.
I mean, the record should reflect that um, Mr. Earls is holding up a uh, black skirt before he had jury at this time. That's, um, that is listed as State's Exhibit 291. Now, Mr. Earls, you testified that there are a number of, um, I guess, defects or holes in the skirt that you noticed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are they still, do you still notice them on the skirt? Yes. And are they in the same position? Um, are they still in the same position where you noticed them when you, when you first uh, inspected the skirt back in February of 2014? They seem to be uh, in the same position as where they were photographed. Yes. Okay. And um, using this uh, light colored, I guess, piece of um, fold, uh, folder, would that assist you in uh, showing the ladies and gentlemen here what holes uh, or defects in the material that uh, we're talking about? Yes, it would. Okay. Gentlemen, may approach you. Yes. And um, Mr. Ross, are you able to hold that up with, with the uh, piece of um, folder paper so the jury can see? Is it? Did it slip? Is it? Can you go that further? Or? Um, yes. Right there. And if, if you could press the um, folder more against the material that I'm not sure. If, and the record should reflect that. Um, Mr. Earls has placed a manila folder between the uh, inside of the skirt to show where the, I guess, the defects or the holes in the material are located. Okay. Now, you testified that the majority of the holes or defects were on one side of it, on one side of the skirt. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, and right now, you're showing that you're showing that particular side to the uh, jury at this point. Is that correct? Yes. Can you flip it around and show them the other side? Sure. Now, there's some, there's some white tags, small white tags that uh, you can see on the skirt, is that correct? Or, yes. Um, what, what are they? Do you know what they are? Those are not from, they were not there. Yeah, so what are they? Uh, these are laboratory tags that no. uh, from Honolulu PD Police Department. Okay. When, when, did you, did, when did you first notice those tags on the skirt? This is the first time. Um, as far as this skirt goes, uh, to your knowledge, was it sent out for, or before we get to that, I, I'm, I'm not sure if you testified to this yet, did you conduct any presumptive testing on the skirt? Yes, I did. And um, can you, you know, this time, can, can the state ask which areas he did the presumptive testing? Yes. Okay. Can you show the ladies and gentlemen here which areas you Conducted the presumptive testing. Okay, uh, there's actually 
several areas that you can see that I circled. I uh, chose, of course, the stained areas uh, were the most logical to check. Um, circled the area with a Sharpie and then labeled it as well. Uh, one was checked in the uh, back as well, but uh, Okay, well, no, without showing the stained results. So, um, but yes, looking for the stained areas. And after you conducted the presumptive test, um, what, if anything, did you do eventually with this black skirt? Shipped this out for further analysis. And where did, sh where did you ship it out to? To the Honolulu Police Department, Scientific Investigative Section. And before you had this shipped out to the Honolulu Laboratory, the um, Scientific Investigation Investigative Section, uh, where was the skirt? That was stored in evidence in the Wailuku Police Station. Okay. And so did you have did you yourself have to retrieve it from evidence at the Weather Police Station? Yes. Before sending it out to the Honolulu lab? Yes. And um, did you did you receive it at a, at a later time from the Honolulu lab? Yes. Um, and can you uh, tell us how is it that you received it at that later time? Uh, from FedEx shipment. I and, secured. And who did it go to? It came came to the Wailuku police station to my attention, and then I uh, opened the sealed container, and then inside was, within these bags, the same skirt. And then what did, what did you do with the skirt at that time? Just submitted it back into evidence for storage. And when you say you submitted it back into evidence, can you just briefly describe what does that mean or what does that entail? Sure. Um, so there's a chain of custody showing uh, every item of evidence that comes into police custody uh, documents every time it is handled by anyone who has a bona fide reason to handle the evidence. And then it, uh, even your shipping, when you ship it to FedEx through to Honolulu PD, for example, uh, I sign it over to assign uh, to the actual tracking label that is on the FedEx box, and it is sealed by me. And then when they receive it, they note that it is sealed and it is intact. And then inside, everything is still securely packaged within its original packaging. And is that what happened? Is that what you? Is that the procedure you followed with this skirt as the state exhibit two ninety one? Yes. Okay. Now, if you can go ahead and um, wrap that back up and place it back into the packaging. Was that stapled on? It was so. Oh. By your script.
bring up, Mr. Rose, you testified um, earlier that you did try to process two rolls of tape. Um, are these the two rolls? Yes, they are. And how do you know those are the rolls? Uh, they were within the package that had my original seal dated and initialed by me. Now, counsel mentioned that um, he asked you whether one of the rolls had, what was, I guess, had more tape or was bigger than the other roll. Are you able to tell that from these, looking at these two rolls? Well, um, one looks a little thicker, but there's also cardboard that's inside, so, which was soaking wet, so. Okay, but is one thicker than the other? Uh, yes. Slightly. And are these the rules that you attempted to uh, recover or retrieve fingerprints if they were in heaven? Yes, you can tell the there's the, still the black residue on the exterior of the tape where I tried to use black magnetic powder to check for any fingerprints. Okay. Um, you can go ahead and patch those. And with respect to these rolls of tape, because they are tape, did you try to um, peel off any of the masking tape from the rolls? Yes, I did. And can you describe what, what you did? What okay. You to do? Um, so, whenever um, you need to rip off tape, off of a, any kind of roll, duct tape, scotch tape, any kind of tape, uh, it's possible to leave your fingerprint on the sticky part of the tape. So uh, I, once they were dried, I checked the outside for fingerprints using black magnetic powder. I was going to check the inside of the end of the tape to see if there may be a fingerprint on the sticky part of the tape, the adhesive side of the tape. And because of the degradation and being soaked in water, uh, it just was impossible. I tried to carefully remove the end of the both rolls and I couldn't get them apart. So. Okay, and if you could uh, repatch it, please. And um, you're may to retrieve the other documents. You may. Sorry. Permission granted. Okay, Michelle, while you're sitting there, just, just you can stay there. Just okay. Look at the a smaller monitor facing you. Um, what are we looking at in the state's exhibit 239? Okay. Uh, 239 is the, the two rolls of tape that I just uh, showed the jury, and uh, they're standing up on end in this photograph. And it's the exhibit 240. 240 is uh, one side of the squashed rolls that you can see the actual outside of the tape. Um, Yara, yeah, this time I have a different way to take home too, but this, would this be appropriate? All right. Um, I guess this would be an appropriate time to adjourn for the day. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we will adjourn for the day. Please keep in mind that collection instructions that remain throughout, uh, remain in effect throughout, and uh, have a nice weekend. Thank you very much for your services, jurors, this week. We'll look forward to seeing you on Monday at 9 a.m. Thank you. Sorry, no, not 9 a.m.? No, no, no.